Hello and welcome to Analyst Hangout. I am Perpetual Fasami Peter. Well, joining me on the show today are Avril Samojo, the Chief Research Officer for Invest Data Consulting Limited. Thanks for joining us today. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. And of course, uh, joining me also today is Charles Fakroha, a stockbroker and business analyst. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Joining virtually, we have Garu Bakrufi, the MDCO, APT Securities Limited. Thank you for joining us, sir. Mr. Garba, if you can hear me, thanks for joining us. All right, and of course, uh, later on the show, uh, we'll have a special appearance, but I'll keep that until later on. And so we'll begin with the stock market report for today. And a Nigeria's equities market witnessed another session of negative close on Friday as investors remain cautious in anticipation of the upcoming Monetary Policy Committee, that's the MPC meeting that will hold next week. The market decreased by 0.3% at the close of trading today, causing the All Share Index to close at 49,026.62 business points. The market's capitalization closed at 26.44 trillion naira. While the total volume of transactions settled at 169.18 million units, valued at 3.19 billion naira in over 3,000 deals. Well, that's what we had today. And of course, if you've been following the market, you would see that it hasn't been very friendly. And then we have a mod <laughs> Mr. Omodion here to talk to us about that. Yeah, actually, I would say that the market has been on a downtrend for almost uh, one week now. It tried to make a kind of uh, rebounds on Tuesday, but on the next day it gave up. Yeah. And also, I won't you know, be surprised that the local market is also responding to the global trend that is happening, especially the recent uh, you know, mm -hmm. rate hike across the globe, especially in the U.S. and the Eurozone. That also has kind of uh, put a kind of shake of fear to the local investor here that we might also follow that same trend in our own MPC. Already people are since they leave the the All right, Mr. Omodio was talking about how the market fed, and for him, he's saying that it feels the local market is beginning to respond to uh, the global economic uh, yeah, issues, yeah. really. Yeah, actually, you know, since the deflation the data came out you know, last week, and uh, we crossed the 20 percent uh, mark of interest rate um, inflation, that mm -hmm. percentage of inflation, that also have set uh, both the, the pension managers, retail investors, and Shaking because now, as we speak, now no kind of investment uh, window you want to say you are earning you know, close to that uh, figure, and that is why everybody is just to, 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 to see what the MPC will do. Naturally, if MPC leave the inflation, you know, uh, with the interest NPR, rate, NPR. Uh, NPR interest rate will change, fine for the market. But if they also eat it off, that will see you see the market will be so. I put a both equity and everything like the first first week, but after that. Direction will also be given. So those that right. want to really look for where to edge, will be those that want to really say, let me hold cash. But holding cash is, you know, you have yourself a, a, a harm. Because if you are holding cash now, you are really okay. just, for me, I'm glad the market for me is simply not to know the big boys and also <laughs> and the small boys. And All right. I'm not thinking that I, I think I'll, I'll like you to. Is that okay. At any given time, whether there's uncertainty in the market, there's opportunity for people to make money. That is why you need to have to combine your fundamental and technical. I tell you that the more market becomes more volatile, more opportunity, more risk, but you have to know that way to put your money. Okay. Now, very okay. quickly, uh, looking at the MPC meeting, which we expect to cover by next week, what are your expectations? Well, I think in um, an earlier uh, show, I have mentioned that uh, I hope um, and I know that uh, the members of the MPC, they are vast in issues of monetary policy and, of course, um, the capital market. I don't see them as people who are inflation hawks. That is, you just keep increasing inflation because... Um, you just keep increasing your NPR mm -hmm. because inflation rate is also going up. Uh, for me, I think if I'm a member of that committee, it's going to be really deliver. You know, but you know, but what I will advise about, that okay. yes, what I will expect them to do. If you leave the rate unchanged, that's also an issue. If you increase the rate, that's also an issue. Let so me come in do? here. Let okay. me come in here. There are those who will say that. If you're talking about inflation, for you to be able to address inflation, you need to look at the type of inflation it is. Now, the type of inflation we're dealing with then determines the tool we're going to use to address it. Isn't that supposed yes, to be the I case? Agree with you, yes, we will say yes, it's cost push inflation. Exactly. But you see, the economy is whole, is whole. So we need an integrated approach. Okay. You know? So once you have monetary policy, just one aspect of it to control inflation. Uh, your, your, your inflation, we need to also look at the other fiscal policy production, production production we need to produce just yes just to add to what my colleague just said now you know if you look at around the globe now i would say that the central banks of the world or the the committees they are just looking at the uh, inflation expectation they are not looking at the re-inflation 
because expectation is what they're going to continue to you know, high create because oh continue to increase and that expectation is what they're doing look at this really inflation what is it doing to the economy is it doing harm or good to the economy like you just said if this will have a what we call liquidity push inflation you can continue what to to hack your interest rate to more pop the liquidity out My of the system thoughts exactly then if not this is not liquidity push inflation you need to think outside the board that's why i said people that mm -hmm. the economy the person should also turn around now and think what else can we do if we are thinking to follow the trend of my uh, mature economy the western world for our own local economy, I said we are getting it wrong somewhere. Exactly. And at the same time, this is time for us to look at in what what are those things that are also you know you know influencing our cost here. Yes. We know that it's energy, which we know what is the cost today. We know that it's oil price, and at the same time, the estimate market is most important. And these foreign and these are things that should be addressed. And I believe that at this point, federal government also should go and take care of what security. Once we take care of our security to a level, our you no know, farmers will go back to the farm. We now start seeing what goods sure. coming out. Now, even though we are already in the harvest season, as we speak, because the quantity of food coming out of the farm won't match demand, price will remain high because yes. people are not at home because of fear of uh, you know, bandits and all okay. the stuff. I think I believe that it's a holistic thing. Both the, the monetary aspect and the fiscal should shake their hand at this point now. And address, not just because. UK have increased their interest rate, mm -hmm. US have done that, then uh, Switzerland have done the right. we, we have We have other guests who are joining okay. us virtually. And so before we move on to the Securities and Exchange Commission and the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers uh, Bill and all that, I would like Mr. Garba to comment on um, this just for a brief moment. Well, uh, we have said it that uh, really the market surprised us. It's going further down for the whole of the week. But we are expecting that the coming week, the market will rebound back. Exactly. In the fact that we are having end of the quarter, in the fact that we are expecting NPC, and we are expecting the NPC Absolutely. decision to retain all others without change the rate. Because if they really change the rate, it will worsen the situation of the market. We hope that they will leave the maintain the NPR and all other rates to remain the same. So when the end of the quarter, end of the month we are expecting the market to bounce back and all sin is not lost all right that's thank you sir yeah. okay so very quickly let's move on to the securities and exchange commission and the chartered institute of stockbrokers and all the stakeholders in the nigerian capital market have backed a bill to prohibit ponzi and pyramid schemes as well as other illegal investment platforms in nigeria the bills were a bill for an act to repeal the Investment and Security Act 2007 and enact the Investment and Securities Bill to establish Securities and Exchange Commission as the apex regulatory authority for the Nigerian capital market, as well as regulation of the market to ensure capital formation, the protection of investors, maintain fair, efficient and transparent market and reduction of systematic risk and for related matters. And the Bill for an Act to repeal the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers, CAP C9, Law of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004, and provide for the establishment of the Chartered Institute of Securities and Investments and Related Matters. You know, I mentioned earlier that we have a special guest who is yes. joining us, and it's at this point that I'll introduce our special guest. This is the first time we're having a female analyst join us, so you might as well clap if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, my name. Yeah, yeah, welcome. All right. Okay. Uh, well, joining us is Ukoli Edoka, the MD of Kari Securities. Uh, good to have you join us today, ma'am. Hello. If you can hear me, uh, we are glad to have you join us today. If you can hear me, uh, please uh, let me know. Yeah, I can hear you very well, but I don't know whether you can hear me because I've said thank you for inviting me over okay, all right okay, thank okay. you we're glad to have you now i'd like you to you know talk to us about this particular view now the director general of seg that's lamido yuguda during his presentation said nigeria needs and deserves an internationally competitive and well-functioning capital market to facilitate the ongoing economic diversification. And then he believes that the passage, as well as the enactment of the Investment and Securities Bill, will be a pivotal step in that direction. What are your thoughts? Well, um, he's, he's right. Our DG is right in that direction because uh, he believes in the ability of the of the of the of the stockbrokers 
to move the economy forward. Um, he believes that the uh, passage of the bill will, you know, um, bring in more quality or more skilled professionals into the capital market. Hence, he's pushing for it. If you take it, if the if the bill is um, is signed into law, it's going to ensure that. You know, the, the people that are professionals practicing in the capital market uh, will be well regulated. How? They are going to make sure that they get the, the prerequisite knowledge and also continue, pro, uh, you know, training and retraining of these professionals. And they actually get to govern them as in one on one because, and that will help to eliminate both these Ponzi schemes and every other, you know, similar. Um, schemes that is in the country so and that will also bring in you know bringing some efficiency in the profession and in the capital market as a whole all right you were part of that hearing talk to us uh what what are your thoughts generally about uh, that particular bill are there special uh clauses that are very dear to you hello if you can hear me all right, I guess uh, we lost connection there. Okay, very quickly, uh, let, let's let's have your thought on this particular. You talk to us about you know what it offers us. Yes, you know that um, obviously the challenge of stockbrokers, you know, with their sister trade union, Ashon, and of course other stakeholders in the market. We are doing everything possible to see how we can have a market where everybody will say this is our market, and there will be fair transparency then even the systematic risk will be reduced. We will see people who operate in this market who are the real professionals, whether they are providing data or whether they are educating the investors. These are supposed to be quality people, people that have been trained, regulated. So we will see a market where, apart from satisfying domestic investors, we also want to attract foreign investors to come. Because if your market is not well regulated, that is... Uh, asymmetry of communication according to those in the media where the operators have better information they are more skilled they take advantage of the investors and there are no ways to read address some of these abnormalities and that's why we saw what happened in the market in the past you know a lot of investors a lot of some, some scrupulous operators dealt with some of these investors and some of them have vowed that they would not come back to the market so what this bill seeks to do is to ensure that Anybody that's operating in this market, you know, whether you're a portfolio manager, you're a fund manager, you're a stockbroker, you know, you're an investment advisor, everybody has to be regulated. Uniform regulation. And that is what the, all the stakeholders are pushing for. All right. And what that means is that those who used to sell other people's shares without their knowledge <laughs> will not be able to do that of again. Of course. It, okay. well, it, it, they, they'll be there, <laughs> but there are enough measures to take care of Okay. Them. That's fine. <laughs> You wanted to say something. Yeah, okay. just okay, okay, let, let me just add to it. Okay. You know, like he just said, and the and our, our colleague uh, offline said uh, that uh, the B is a record development. I agree, you no know, hundred percent, a record development. But I think in Nigeria, we are good in either making law or making policy or going for B to be signed into law. But implementation has been the problem in this country. This is not the first time you no know, we are presenting this kind of being approved for you no know, past you no. Know, no uh, DGs and all, but we have not seen the difference in the market. I think it will go beyond the paper, nothing, or the, the, the sentence in the, in the, in the bill. We should t put that into action to bring that. You know, we're talking about policy scheme. Policy scheme is thriving in Nigeria because there is no enough education for them to know where they should put their money. Because when you don't have it with your money, you think of where you can do it quick, quick, you know, quick, uh, quick uh, return. That's why they're good. If say can sit down and it can sit down operators like uh, my brother here and the, and the brother that just pulled can just put their heads together and make sure that you no know, the masses are educated if you're looking at enhancing your status as a uh, chartered or not chartered you are just within yourself but we're going to service the world the public if the gap between the public you are servicing and you is small that's like you just said that is where no you can take blue and but i believe that if you educate nigeria so that we can you know, attract them more back to the market because since uh, 2007 2008 but most of them are still sitting on the fence it's all because these days we're trying to like put them back gradually but if the regulators put their you no know, for example now i want to just see one or two things as regard that training you know N ngs once a while do work on investor education through zoom and uh, that is for those that are already in the market 
We have those uh, informal people that are okay. on the street that you are not bringing. You know, this place that you have a lot of fun that are untouched. On, on Bring them to people. Those people are not being rich. You know, I think we should change the model. That's why if the bill will be implemented, I tell you, it's not just if it's implemented, have a decentralized you know, style of what of training. You no, know, the training they give to my my guy here, it's not for the training you give the man what on the street. You have different model to not try this When that is done, can I just say something? Thirty well, seconds. We, we don't even okay. have that time okay. now. Well, uh, Mrs. Sinkali, Mrs. Sinkali, yeah. just before you go, I'd like you to respond to what uh, Mr. Charles Omodio just said, just before you go, in less than two minutes. Okay, what did he say? Which of them? He said a whole lot of things there. <laughs> oh, well, just respond to he anyone any you want to respond to. Okay, yeah, um, okay, um, I would say that passage of this bill is going to bring the professionals in the capital market together is going to because if you if you agree with me if you go to any other jurisdiction even as an ICAM person you must have to undergo their courses and to be well integrated into their system thereby they know you and they you know take you through how they want their system to be so by passage of this bill it means that all professionals in the capital market will also come under one umbrella and do the you know mo uh, you know practice their profession is either if you are not if you if you know your areas cis covers almost all those um certification they have they run certification courses you come it doesn't take you even up to a month you get certified okay, let, let me come in here now, now. He, he was more particular about the ordinary people the ones who are being cheated or the ones who end up being uh, victims of ponzi schemes so he's saying that beyond the certification that goes on within the industry among the players there is also the need to educate the common man that man who is eager to invest in one instrument or the other there is that need to educate educates that man so he understands the difference between a Ponzi scheme and that which is well regulated and certified. That, that's what he, he talked about. Yeah, that, 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 that's right. So by the time this bill is signed and um, all professionals come into under one umbrella, they should be able to debate a means and strategies of creating this awareness in any way you are you know that you already have the responsibility if we want to eliminate ponzi scheme then we have one aim and we devise a, a strategy to see how we eliminate them if, uh, by creating uh, all this awareness if all of us in the in the in the profession join hand to create awareness i tell you it will be eliminated all right thank you so much for joining us ma'am thank you very much all right, so moving on, Oscar Onyema's 11 years of li leading the Nigerian Exchange Group is being called to question over alleged poor financial management and lack of value creation for shareholders. Since March 2021, when the exchange went public, the board and management haven't proposed or offered its over 400 shareholders dividends, which means investors that invested in NGX Group haven't received the necessary value for their investment. However, a year before, the directors of NGX Group awarded themselves over 200.41 million ordinary shares, worth 5.57 billion naira. That's when you uh, peg it alongside the price. That's the opening price of a 27 naira 90 kobo per share as a deferred bonus plan to keep them in the company for a specified period. Now, aside from the shares they gifted to themselves at the 2020 annual general meeting, they also proposed that a sum of 126 million naira be approved by shareholders as payment to the non-executive directors of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. In a document dated September 14, 2022, Olaju War and Ibirunke, representing a class of shareholders of NGX Group, through their solicitors, SO and C Legal, demanded that the management halt some resolutions it plans to ask for passage through a proxy on September 30, 2022. Now, part of the resolutions include raising additional capital of 35 billion naira, with 15 billion of the amount expected to come from debt, and 20 billion naira from equity. The shareholders, through their counsel, are questioning why the management wants to borrow 15 billion naira when it has unissued shares from which the sum can be raised. They also argue that NGX Group remains viable, so the loan is unwarranted. Well, this will be our talking point when we we'll come back from this break. We'll take a break now. When we we'll come back, we'll dive right into this conversation. Stay with us. Don't go away.
point on that time out. And now uh, I'd like to hear from uh, both of you. That's uh, uh, Mr. Omodion and Mr. Uh, Mr. Omodion and Mr. Charles. Okay, so who goes first? <laughs> yeah, let the bucket player win. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's have you. Allergies so on online too. Yes. Mr. Market I, players. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I so the special. Okay, let's start with Mr. Market let's players. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Mr. Garba, uh, talk to us. Yes. Uh, 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 Mr. Garba, if you can hear me, I'd like you to talk to us. All right. Well, uh, let's start with you, Mr. Omodio. Okay. For me, you know, I've said it earlier in this program that uh, for NGS to be asking for additional funds at this time, that the is... Share okay. was allotted to the uh, broking dealing firms. So we, the brokers, got the majority share of this. But what is our position to do? That portion of searching for the management it was something that agreed long time ago i was one in a council and we are aware of it and even the guy who was raising the issue who was in the council at the same time with me and we are aware of those arrangements so executing what was stated earlier All right, uh, Mr. Garba, we can barely hear you, but in the meantime, you just hold on while we hear uh, what Mr. Omojo has to say. Well, actually, at the beginning last week, I said that there is no need for them coming to market to raise funds now because the industry where they are all over the world is you no know, money spending in the industry that even close eyes, you are still making money. Coming for additional funds at this time is what people are really you know, questioning. And also, they allow, I would allow them to allow for like another two years to you know, start solidify after the you know the, the presentation and also make money to even reward their shareholders before you can ask for. And also, like what reason that if you have additional shares, why are you going for work for you know, another IPO? Debt. Can't you not just go the work rather write the shoot for you no know, ask them? That means because you have not performed well, you are not finding to approach your you know, shareholder for additional funds. Because I like you said, you, that you know, it's not even from the of, issue of I like, okay, I like you just said now that the major shareholders are the operators who agree. Those they understand the industry that here that is a money spending of business they are into. For me, I think that they are you know, so you know, fast in asking for an additional form. Like people are calling for forensic or, you know, audit for the operation on the last day. So okay. here, if for me that they feel that trains are properly done, they have good audit, so I think they can move and let the public see All what right. is happening. Okay. That's the right to we'll, we'll come back to you very quickly, Mr. Fakro. Uh, let's have your thought. Yes. Um, I, I want you to come in from you know uh, the rebuttal by NGX. Okay. Of course, like um, anything that happens anywhere, of course, you have the corporate um, communication people, of course, they will respond to kind of put issues in perspective. Yes, the NGS has come out openly and have said most of all these things they were being accused of already in public domain and they are still committed to corporate uh, governance. Alaji alluded that he was in council when some of these things were discussed and agreed and most of the senior brokers are aware of this um, issue. So coming out now, yes, some persons expected so much returns from the NGS, which really most of the trading license holders now, yes, you know, that um, once it was listed, even in the OTC market or even in the NGS itself, the price will go up so well because the NGS will all believe that it's doing so well. He said it's a money spinner. We all know that. But they are now saying that the prices didn't move as expected. You know, so for the NGS group now coming to say they want to raise money is making some of them to feel a little bit uneasy. And that's why all these issues are coming up now. Yeah, but for me, you know, as a player, I will just say let the professionals, the consultant for the NGS group, look at their books very well, advise so that uh, everybody will be on the same page. All right. Well, uh, Mr. Gamma, if you can hear me, all the stock and cash rewards were made despite poor financial performance in the same year, 2020, suffering a 93.96 million naira operating loss. Now, despite escaping from the group of loss in full year 2021 with 281.84 million naira, the management spent 56.07% of its 5.77 billion naira revenue on about 200 personnel within 12 months last year. But total expenses, 6.51 billion naira, surpassed the turnover. 
uh, let's get your reaction to now this is what i want you to react to i totally understand that well they had meetings people were there people agreed but beyond the fact that people agreed you know you know there's that part where you probably agree to a thing where you don't know so much and then someone opens your eye to certain information and then it occurs to you that you probably agreed in ignorance talk to us about this well, the truth of the matter that uh, NTX moved from the guarantee by the, uh, by the shareholders to now into the mutualize. Now, what people they don't seem to understand, it worked like government in the past. Remember that we have exchange in Ibadan branch, we have Kaduna branch, we have Potapa branch, we have Yola branch, we have Bochir branch, and what have you. We don't need all this. But at that, that was the request of the government. Before NGX, before Lagos exchange become Nigerian exchange, one of the conditions was given to them to open Kaduna branch and Port Harcourt branch. With all those overhead, people have to bear them now that they have OMS system that you can trade not even in the country and beyond the country, they don't need those branches. Yes. So in attempt to stimulate this, they have to ask some of the staff to go and they have to take care of their need and their financial gratuity. And all these are to this. So I say it is in transition. And I don't have anything to worry about it because this will not last again. We are in the system. We know the current staff now doesn't have this. If you look at their half year result, you can see changes. And we believe that change will continue to manifest over a period of time. In terms of... Uh, Mr. Gaba. must explain what you are going to do with the money. And the purpose must be in accordance of the objective of the investors, otherwise they will not get that money. Yes. All right, thank you. I, I mean, I would have pressed for more, but we're pressed for time. So uh, let, let's move on. Now, at the end of a court-ordered meeting in Lagos, the shareholders of Sterling Bank approved the carve-out and transfer of the bank's non-interest banking business to the Alternative Bank Limited under a proposed scheme of arrangement between Sterling Bank and the holders of its fully paid-up ordinary shares of 50 Kobo each. All the shareholders who attended the meeting approved the initiative and commended the foresight of the directors. They also advised the board and management to work hard to nurture new businesses in a bid to enhance the growth of the holding company. Now, following the implementation of the scheme, shareholders will exchange their shares in the bank for shares in Holdco in the same proportion as their current holdings, which will be a regulated entity for CBN purposes. Uh, Mr. Garba, I, I would like you to talk to us about this very quickly. What's the import of this? Well, what, what I see that is, this is what the board have prepared and the shareholder required. So wish them the best and let us see that this turn out to be more profit for the organization and better earning and better dividend. Okay. Because if of them all doing this and did not translate into Naira and Kobo, then it will be too bad for the company. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Naira and Kobo, very important. All right. Let, let's hear you. <laughs> just, uh, you just said that, uh, you know, it's true that most of these uh, financial uh, you know, institutions are going to become a, a holding okay. company. <laughs> and, you know, the reason is that, you know, before now they have all called universal license, and then they can do all the business. But now with the uh, doing only standing on your bank that if it with the help of good code, I see that you can do other business to add to the bottom line. For me, you no, know, I believe that uh, Sterling Bank before now, you no, know, in holding this money was is it now now they are now. really you no know, known for capital and you know, capital market business exactly. then holding them when we are still learning about this capital market. Now I believe that now that they are coming back to as a whole company, they should also look the wolf that angle as business that they have you no know, kind of um, you know experience and they have um, all it takes to also to expand their business at the end of the day like you don't say number will speak for them not going to a holding company that matters at the end of the day you can see that also what has happened in the uh, airbnb holding before now when they were down with a uh, you no know, non-performing loan the other you no know, that were you know, supporting to pay the 30 global 38 global 40 global well. but now they are passing back if you can see the impact of all this on them look at what is happening in stamp i believe that is a good move for sterling but at the end of the day we want to see the threatening what on the numbers that will where we can give us smile as investor in the bank all right investors always want okay. to smile well okay we'll, just we'll, we'll come uh, back we'll okay. start with you thank okay. you right. well we'll take a break now when we come back uh well we'll move on to comparative analysis of other financial institutions eight one earning stay with us